We are fishing high mountain lakes for some brookies today. So we are out on a lake, and by we, I mean me and Lance, Lance and I. Cheech decided to fish a river and float it yesterday without us. So we came up here, and we're using Cheech's favorite fly, the chimera. Anyway, we've been here for a little bit, and the we Lance started with a midge tip and went, I was dry dropper. We both hooked into a couple right off the bat. And then it slowed down. We've kind of worked over the lake, looked for some channels. Um, this time of year, we're in the fall, the brookies will sometimes stage shallower and hang a little shallow, but not today. Could be the full moon last night, who knows. Um, so we've been working our way back out. I put on another fly to get the rig down. So I've got a, a basically a big gray bionic ant and then a little coronamid and then the chimera on point and for a few minutes there it was every cast and like a dummy I forgot the GoPro chest mount so I'm stuck with this selfie stick thinger so we'll try to get some other ones on film but uh, anyway it's been good okay this is where it gets tricky hold the rod and the GoPro you get a good view of the Orvis H3 butt end and what should be a brook trout on a chimera. Yep. Burn. That's a big burn on Cheech right there. And there's a Lancer right across the way. Missed one. Yep. Chimera right in the kisser. There he is. And uh, good fall colors. The fish are not too bad to look at. Take a look at his beautiful colors and send him on his way. Goodbye. So we're both kind of doing the same thing, dry dropper. The fish have been a little spooky, so we've been trying to um, minimize the splash on the water, which uh, the dry fly will do. And I'm about three, four feet down to the first dropper and then another three, uh, four feet to the next one. You just cast out and you kind of wait for the dry fly to go under. But uh, anyway, that's what it's been like. Lance will catch one here on cue. He looks a lot further away than he is. All right. We were catching him pretty quick. Curtis found us a hole back there and then all of a sudden it just dried up. We don't know what happened. Maybe Curtis had uh, the farts and it leaked through his breathable waders, you never know. There's always that. And this fish rose a little ways down, so I kicked over to it. Not the biggest of rookies, but man, they don't make them a lot prettier than that. No doubt. Okay. That one ate an orange beaded chronomid. They like the orange today. Orange bead is very very key today gotta have orange i just put the camera down and lance was putting his hood on and missed a fish so i cast into that area and lo and behold we're gonna have to do this the good way yeah look at that sun shining right in the camera lens mark our spot lance 
we've been trying we'd get into the fish and then he'd get a few and then they'd move on or we'd move on get blown away sorry for the bad camera angle folks but that's another fish on a chimera that is the ticket so yeah if you uh if you find yourself fishing for brook trout in the fall you need to tie up a few of these that's not a bad fish nah. Swim a ladle, buddy. Still doing dry dropper. He's good. And now Lance is hooked up. But you know what? I gotta get over here to the shore and take care of a little business. Orange bead. Orange bead. What? Who'd have thunk? Yeah, we dialed him in again. These stupid fish are moving around a lot. Can't complain about the scenery. And that right there is why zippered waders are the bomb. I'm not even kidding. They're the bomb. My boat's trying to get away. So while I'm over here, there's a little bit about my setup. I've got the uh, Outcast Super Fat Cat that we had in one of the last videos. So I have my one of the saddlebags with some food and camera goodies. Then I have a boat bag that I just put behind the seat. And it uh, gets a little wet down in there, but it's not bad. Nice thing about these super fat cats, the seat and the back inflate and keep you out of the water for the most part. It gets a little wet, but it's not too bad. And then I just tether my net right there with a net retractor. And then it just hangs off the, the back like that. Stripping apron, water boatman. And today I'm fishing my Orvis H3 10 foot six weight with this newish hatch fanatic reel. And again, I'm using dry fly, uh, so a floating line today. And, uh, yeah, let's get back to it. All right, I moved down the lake. I saw a fish rise, so I moved down the lake to cover the rise. I caught that fish and another one, and then uh, this is the third from down here. It's kind of like these fish just move around. Beautiful brookie. That one's kind of a football. Maybe not a full-size, you know, not a Tom Brady-size football. That's like a youth-size football that Cheech could maybe handle, quarterback. Uh, but really fun to catch. And we're not going to kick over there because it's too far. But there's a nice scenic shot of Mr. Egan fighting a brook trout. Probably caught it on an orange bead, something or other. All right, we are at the end of the day. The sun has gone down over the horizon, over the mountain over there. So we're going to head back and got a bit of a drive ahead of us. But... Uh, a dry dropper was the setup of the day. We just used floating lines. Uh, Lance caught a few on a midge tip at first, but the fish were kind of moving around a little hard to nail down where they were holding. But once you got into them, it was kind of a fish, fish every cast sort of thing. Anyway, check out our website, flyfishfood.com. If you want to see links to any of the products we used in the description, give it a click. Lance is way down there. He might kick over here by morning.